Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ciphering Weather. In today's video, Hurricane Ernesto has been upgraded and we are going to see major impacts potentially to Bermuda as a major hurricane as well as big waves along the east coast. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to tropicaltibits.com for Wednesday, August 14th, 2024. The black arrows pointing towards Hurricane Ernesto now. It's been upgraded this afternoon with winds of 75 miles per hour, and it's only gonna to continue to rapidly intensify on its approach to Bermuda over the next few days. Here's the vorticity signature, the spin and energy in the atmosphere associated with Ernesto just north of Puerto Rico and Hispaniola. You can also see two other tropical waves in the main development region. One has a little bit of thunderstorm convection with it, the other not so much. But we'll continue to monitor that, that region as the Climate Prediction Center is showing the possibility of development in the long term as we get towards the middle end of August in this region. Here's a close-up view of uh, Hurricane Ernesto. You can see it's got a major flare-up right in the middle of that thunderstorm convection center as we speak. So we're seeing this storm continuing to intensify. If we look at the microwave background image over the last 48 hours, you can see how it got, went from a tropical storm 48 hours ago to a hurricane as it after passing uh, Puerto Rico earlier yesterday. And you can see how the eye wall is starting to form. So here's the national hurricane forecast as of 5 p.m. We have 75 mile per hour winds moving northwest at 16. So it is still continuing to slow down as it moves, as it continues to turn towards the north. But you can see at around 2 p.m. on Friday, it is forecasted to be a major hurricane. And we'll look at that on the models. Bermuda also has in pink, hurricane watches in effect. Now that cone of uncertainty was based off the spaghetti track guidance. So you can see all the plots where this storm could go over the next five to seven days. And yes, Newfoundland and Atlantic Canada are still in play. Here's a model intensity guidance where this storm look likely will peak out at around category three strength, which is being forecasted by some of our hurricane models. Here's the GFS model, cyclonic vorticity. So the black hexagon would be Ernesto. We have our upper level ridge overhead. So we're gonna see this storm rapidly intensify with that low wind shear environment, as you can see here. And our moisture bubble will be protected from that dry air surrounding the storm. So two days from now on Friday, August 16th, we see an intensifying hurricane on approach to Bermuda at this point. We have it down to a 968 millibar low pressure system, which would be around category two strength. And we'll start to have some interaction with that upper level trough just to its north. And we can see how the, the light wind shear is gonna be protecting that moisture bubble as it plows through that Saharan air layer. Now, Friday night, we can see this, this will likely be the peak of the storm uh, before it starts to get eroded away by that upper level trough, de increasing some of that wind shear as it transitions into extra tropicalness after passing Bermuda. So here we have the H-Wharf model, which is one of the hurricane models, and you can see it's gonna be down to a 958 millibar category three hurricane at this point, Friday night, going into Saturday morning. And if we go just a little bit further than that, by Saturday afternoon, we can see that, at least on this model run on the H-Wharf, that we'll have a category two, strong category two, maybe a weak category three hurricane moving th just to the west of Bermuda. So Bermuda will be in the eye wall if this is the case, uh, which will be the strongest winds. And you can see the amount of rain that will also be dropping in this region as it moves by the island. And besides wind and rain, we're gonna see a lot of waves being propagated out from this large hurricane 
especially as it intensifies to major Category 3 status. So all up and down the East Coast of the United States, from Florida up to the Carolinas, Long Island, New England, and eventually into Canada, we'll see wave heights around 5 to 7 feet. And then, of course, near Bermuda, we could see upwards of 20 to 30 feet along with storm surge. So here's the key messages from the National Hurricane Center regarding Hurricane Ernesto. On the left is in English and on the right is in Spanish. You can pause this to take a chance to read it. So back to the GFS model. Now we're at day five on Monday, August 19th. And we took a little bit of a jog to the east uh, today on this model run. So this is in showing a direct impact with Newfoundland or Atlantic Canada. Uh, so that's a little bit of a bright side at the moment, but again, you're still in that cone of uncertainty as the Bermuda Azores high will try to rebound and strengthen, pushing the storm a little bit closer to the coast potentially. Now we also have two other tropical waves in pink and purple that we're mon monitoring in the main development region there. Uh, but you can see that we're going to have some straight line upper level winds there that's going to be creating a lot of uh, wind shear in the main development region where those two tropical waves are located. But if they get closer as they move westward, you can see it's a lot more favorable. So that's why we're going to be monitoring this region for development uh, as we get to the latter half of August. And then here you can see that that wind shear is causing the first purple wave to have no thunderstorm convection. It's in that Saharan air layer embedded, but that other tropical wave will have a lot of moisture as it comes off the coast of Africa. So then by the time we get to a week from now on the 21st, we see some vorticity trying to tighten up with that pink tropical wave as it's off the coast of Africa. With Ernesto on its way into the North Atlantic, on its way towards uh, Europe at this point. Here's the European model showing that close call with Atlantic Canada. So that's why I said it's still possible for this to make direct impacts in Canada over the next few days after passing Bermuda. And here's the ensemble models showing where this storm can go as well. All the mon different model members on the European on the left, the GFS on the right, and the support for our next tropical wave potentially developing off the coast of Africa in pink in about a week's time just around the Cabo Verde Islands, which is climatologically correct because around August 20th onward, that would be considered peak peak hurricane season as we go from August 20th to about mid-October. That's when everything in the Atlantic climatologically usually is firing into all cylinders. So We'll keep an eye on this region just in case. So we'll continue to monitor Hurricane Ernesto as it's approaching Bermuda, throwing out a bunch of huge waves along the islands and the east coast of the United States on its path. And if it makes any direct impacts with Bermuda or not, it's still going to see major impacts in terms of wind and rain and storm surge from the system, regardless of a direct lot impact with the eye. And then we'll keep an eye on it for Atlantic Canada as well. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on the ciphering weather. So if you'd like to donate to the channel, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you're new and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.